Oh, it went well, very well. So, you feel up to doing something tonight? Jasmine Sage. And I thought I was depraved. Look what the fairies grew, the bottom of my garden. I knew you'd have something. Stay well clear of Jane. She's screwy, unstable. You never know which way she's going to jump. Believe me, I know. I'll support you in every way I can, but don't get involved with Alistair. He's bad news. Oh, it's the gilt on the gingerbread, the icing on the cake. It's monuments and mirror glass, the city's on the make. The devil takes the hindmost, and no one counts the cost. It's such a sweet seduction. Love. You could call it ambition, but someone must be greed. Don't want you for a friend if you're a friend in need. Not gonna tell the truth if you swallow a lie. I want the icing on the cake. Love. You should have woken me. I wanted to make you breakfast. You were so tired when you got here last night. I didn't hear any complaints. Mm -hmm. I'll give you a call. Tonight? Maybe. Or just come around when you're finished. Look, I said I'd call when I can. That was a deal we made. I know. You wanted to change? Okay. So lighten up. Jasmine, I can't get the shower door. Good morning. Oh, sorry. No, no, don't go. I didn't realise. I just called round for coffee. Jasmine, the shower door's off at hinges again. Oh, I'll fix it. We should get it replaced. Yeah. Hey, how's that coffee going? Oh, should be ready. Oh, I can fix it. No, 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 you sit down. Tell me how you're settling in. So, how's Jasmine treating her new flatmate? We get on all right, I think. We have to ask Jasmine. Hey, Jasmine, are you behaving yourself? Sorry? She gave the last one hell. It's not what I heard. Oh, I forgot. You're Brenda Starr, ace reporter. Hardly. There's always two sides. Isn't it a little early for a social call? Have to be up early. To catch the markets. Oh. Is some... Is this yours? <laughs> Look at me, damn you! Have you listened to a word that I've said? Dad won't agree. He wouldn't send me away. He's as worried about you as I am. But what option do we have? I promised I wouldn't touch any more drugs. And what do your promises mean? I gave you your chance. It has to be boarding school now. That's, of course, if I can find one that'll take you. I won't stay. I'll run away. Oh, don't be ridiculous. Oh, why won't anyone listen to what I want? Because you have proved that you are not ready to take responsibility for yourself. I'm nearly 16. And you've got yourself involved in drugs. Just a bit of fun. Fun? Dear God, Chelsea, what do you expect me to say? Run away and have fun, take any drugs that you want, ruin your mind, ruin your life? It's my life! And I'm not going to let you throw it away. No. You want to send me away instead? Because I'm your mother, not your keeper. Please, let me stay at school here. That's <sighs> not up to me. Oh, you can talk the headmistress round. I doubt that very much. Please try. Please. See you later. Yeah, sure. Hey, thanks for the coffee. Go on, have your shower. You'll be late. Bye. 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 Surprise? To find me here? A little. I know a lot. Jasmine said she was having an affair with someone. I didn't even consider it might be you. An affair? Sounds like something my father would have. I go in for meaningful one-night stands. I'm pleased to hear things are picking up for Mark these days. We were great friends once. You may have noticed he hates my guts now. It's a bit obvious. Mm. I only wish you'd let me explain my side of things. I never thought he took the money. What money? Hasn't he told you? 
I shouldn't have said anything. No, please tell me. Nah, what forget happened? it. We used to share a flat together, okay? I took some cash out of the bank to pay a gambling debt. Anyway, I got drunk that afternoon, forgot all about it. Next morning it was gone, every cent. And you think Mark took it? Nah. Look, it was only 500 bucks. Kid stuff. He wouldn't have taken it. I know. Gemma, I know. Maybe someone just said it as a joke, but Mark took it seriously. He still thinks I believe he was a thief. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said anything. Oh, and I'm glad you did. Please, don't say anything to him. If that's what you want. Ancient history. I'm glad you know, though. See you later. I'm sorry to keep you waiting. Oh, that's all right. I appreciate you weren't expecting me. Hardly. Do sit down. I'd uh, rather stand. As you wish. Well, Brad has told you about Chelsea, I suppose. Of course. I can't say I was surprised. Chelsea's drug problem is something that Brad and I will have to work out, but there is something you can do for us. I never wanted Chelsea to go to that school, but she wants to stay. I'd, I'd like to show her that I've tried. Well, the headmistress has made it perfectly clear what she thinks about me. <laughs> Catherine Grizzledon accepted Chelsea because she's a Redfern the third generation to attend St. Margaret's. She wouldn't like a scandal associated with the family name. Your Miss Brizzledon wanted to call the police. I don't believe that. It has to go before the Board of Governors. She wants Chelsea expelled. My day is you'll send me to boarding school. Well, I won't go. Maxine was working at my age. She won't stop me. Well, what can you do without exams? I'll be working at my brother's place. Greg's been teaching me how to mix cocktails. So when I start to travel, I'll always be able to find work. <laughs> travel where? Anywhere that isn't here. And who's Greg? Just someone. Who? He works for my brother. Pretty much runs the place. How old is he? My oh, age doesn't make any difference. I'm bored with boys. Does your mother know you're going out with him? I'm not an idiot. She'd freak. And I don't want a hearing from you. No way. I'm in enough trouble as it is. Well, what's he like? None of your business. Oh, go on. Some things are private. Chelsea, you haven't. Don't be so childish. It's no big deal. Your mother wouldn't think that. What could she do about it? She wouldn't listen if I tried to tell her. She'd just interfere. Yeah, well, that's parents. Dad's different. Because of Carrie being younger, I suppose. Dad let me get on with my own life. Oh, I bet. They would. I do what I like there. Even Greg treats me like an adult. Well, why don't you live with them, then? God, you ask a lot of questions. Oh, and you look like a panda. <laughs> Here, let me have a go. Oh, God. At half past, then. Good. I'll see you then. I'm surprised you got an interview so quickly. Catherine and I sit on several committees together, and I'm not without influence with the Board of Governors of St. Margaret's, as you no doubt know, or you wouldn't be here today. I do appreciate what you're doing for Chelsea. I don't think you appreciate the situation at all. I will not have the Red Fern name dragged through the gutter. I will make every effort to persuade St. Margaret's to take Chelsea back. That's all I ask. But if I fail, and there is a scandal, I will have her name deleted from my will. She will no longer be a red fern. Good morning to you. And we'll be able to do the avocado and prawns again. Great. What would I do without you? Remember, this is only temporary. You're doing such a fine job, I hardly need him to fear. It's your restaurant. Try telling that to Sam Wyeth. He's only agreed to give me half the money I asked for, and I've got to prepare this balance sheet for him. Present profitability, guff. Anticipated future trends, ideas for increased profit, suggestions for present economy. See, you know all about it. I can't speak his language. I won't see a penny until I can finish it for him. I could take a look if you like. 
I couldn't ask you to do it. I didn't say I would. I'll give you a hand, that's all. Alistair? Yes, mate? Can I have the storeroom key? We're a bit low on scotch again. What are you doing with it? Pouring it down the sink? It's these journalists. They drink the stuff like water. Must have insides like blotting paper, eh? Yeah, I reckon. I am not a child, Mother. Well, stop behaving like one. Sit down and listen to me. I will not be summoned from the office. When you called, I thought Caro had had an accident. Your concern is admirable, but misplaced. Why didn't you tell me that Chelsea was involved with drugs? I was going to tell you when I worked out what to do. <laughs> and how long do we have to wait for that? Chelsea is my responsibility. The Red Fern name is mine. Do you think I have no interest in this scandal? There is no scandal. I find it scandalous to hear the news from that woman. All right, all right. I should have told you myself. But Maxine and I have got things to discuss. Like Caro's pregnancy? That was another bit of gossip that I heard from Maxine. What the hell do you want of me? I've long since ceased to expect anything of you. I will handle this situation. Do you understand me? I don't want you to interfere. Defy me if you wish, Bradley. But I advise you to weigh the consequences very carefully. Now, don't let me keep you from your office. Mother! Come on, my lovely. Which do you think I should pay? The bank card or the American Express? Both. Oh, the innocence of youth. Jane, lots of letters today. Your mail's picking up since your last column. Morning, Jane. Hello, Jane, dear. Like some coffee? No, thanks. Good. Because there isn't any. Just this brown stuff. Pania, you really must give me your recipe sometime, dear. Morning. Good morning. I cancelled your nine o'clock appointments. They're coming at three and Not now. Jane, I like a word. Jane, Maxine would like a word. If she's starting with Jane, imagine the mood she'll be in by the time she gets to me. Max is being interviewed today. The top ten women in New Zealand. That should please her. Is she number one? Three. Right. That settles it. Bye. Gemma, did you mind Alistair being there this morning? No, of course not. It's your flat. Yours too. Has it been going on long? Not long. I don't really know how he feels about me. Ask him. Do you think he likes me? Of course he does. Give it time. If it works, it works. If not, you'll still be late with that. I don't know. I hope it's all right. Why my page? Because your column needs help. This new presentation should give it punch. Something that's been sadly lacking in the last few issues. My column is as good as it ever was. Not when you write it, Jane. The last copy I received from you was overwritten, self-indulgent and late. There's nothing wrong with my work. Then prove it. Write the way you wrote before you split up with Campbell. That hasn't got anything to do with it. That has everything to do with it. What you do in your private life is your concern, not mine. But when it shows in the magazine, then I have to do something about it. What's he told you? Oh, sir? He's put you up to this. He's more used to you, so you'll fiddle with my column till it isn't mine anymore. You just want to get rid of me. Jane! Well, it's not gonna work. I'll show you! I hope you do. I hope you pull yourself together and start fighting for your column. Because if you don't, there'll be a new Conneheart. Don't know when he'll be back. You can polish some glasses, if you like. Still not allowed back in the nunnery? Mm, that dump. Who cares? Greg, when did you leave school? As soon as I could. Where's the gin? Alistair wants me to invent a new cocktail. Speciality of the house. Have you always worked in restaurants? Restaurants, bars, hotels. Started training as an air steward once. That'd be neat. No. Me? I didn't fit in. They weren't my type, ducky. <laughs> now you. Any time you wanted to try me out. Might take you up on that. Oh, yeah? Bet you've got masses of girlfriends, though. What about all those air stewardesses? I'll bet there's one or two of those still around. I told you, I had more problems with the stewards. 
Still, gave me a few good connections. There's some good stuff arriving shortly. A bit expensive, but it's quality. Where do these glasses go? I'm not getting scared, are you? No. It's just, well, she's cut my allowance, and if it's expensive, I won't Is be able to... Is that all? A friend might get a taste for free, if she's friendly enough. I've told Jasmine she can use more space on the evening wear feature. I'm working on the assumption that we're going to be light on advertising. Afraid so. How bad is it? Just a few cancellations. Small stuff, mainly. I'm trying to patch the holes. I don't want to tell you how to do your job, but we have to project an image of confidence, so sell us hard. Well, I've got a couple of ideas we could... Oh, well, not now. I've got to do this top ten women interview. I hear they're going to syndicate the whole spread to all the major papers. Quite a feather in your cap. It's a hell of a lot of publicity, and it doesn't cost gloss a cent. And there's one competition that Rexhorn can't win. <laughs> Too much bitters? Could be. Knock that back and I'll mix another. <sighs> oh, these things are pretty potent. What about dynamite? Why not? You've got everything else in it. Know the name. Dynamite. <laughs> How about... Chelsea's choice. Manukau magic? <laughs> Manukau mud. <laughs> Chelsea, your grandmother rang and... What on earth do you think you're doing? I was testing something for Greg. Are you indeed? What did Grandma want? You should go there straight away. For the taxi. And if you don't have enough to do other than drink, you can give them a hand in the kitchen. Sorry. No can do, Mrs Redfern. I take my orders from the boss, you see. And he wants me to invent a new cocktail. Pity that. Otherwise, I'd have been more than willing to oblige. Oh, no, not yet. Was the interview that bad? The whole day's been that bad. Here's a piece of gossip for you. <clears throat> Come in. I finally managed to get on to the Electra publishers, or one of them, anyway. Good news. Maybe. He's got a reputation. He's been investigated once, and the suggestion is he's very slippery with offshore money. <clears throat> Tell me more. Have a lunch. One o'clock, all right? Yeah, fine. I bought your mail. You didn't get a chance earlier. Put it on the desk. In there's one of those nasty ones. Oh, plain old Anglo-Saxon as usual. I reckon you should tell the police. Threatening letters are part of the job. You'll see more of them if you last that long with us. Yes, Mrs. Richmond. Which you won't if you interrupt me again while I'm in conference with Mr. Chapel. Yes, Mrs. Richmond. Look, if it's about boarding school, I promise I won't do anything like that. Oh, you smell as if you've been drinking. It's working in the restaurant. The smell gets in your clothes. You realize you're the third red fern at St. Margaret's. And never a breath of scandal until this. Yes, Grandma. So, what do you want to do with your life? Well, there must be something. I wouldn't mind going to art school, but it won't really matter, will it? Because your grandfather provided for you? Well... You only get that money if the trustees feel it's merited. You mean I mightn't get anything? Not one penny, unless Sam Wyeth and I agree to it. You are proud of being a red fern, aren't you, Chelsea? Yes. Yes, of course I am. So, it has its obligations, too. I said I wouldn't do it again. I don't promise. You have been happy at St. Margaret's, haven't you? It's all right. Well, it's better than going to boarding school. I'm going to try and persuade Miss Brizzleton to change her mind. It'll be very difficult and probably very expensive, but... I've made out a little agreement. No more drugs, no cigarettes, no alcohol. You'll behave yourself at school, no more playing hooky, and you'll knuckle down to your schoolwork. All right? All right. And in return, I'll buy you a new car for your 16th birthday. Oh. Who's that man with Brad? Henry Cartwright, Australasian manager for Diamond Pharmaceuticals. With branches in every corner of the civilized world. Mm -hmm. Big time. <laughs> Lunch break. I just finished this. Later. Food. Now. Where? Can't afford Elle's diner. 
But he'll have to be copying a sandwich across the road. Do you like Alistair's restaurant? Smart, upmarket, overpriced. Rather like Alistair himself. But he can be quite sweet sometimes. So was Machiavelli. Merely a word of warning. One in the office hanging out the available sign is quite enough. I'm not. I've got Mark. Do you think you can trust what Alistair says? If men were rated A to D, he'd be in the Z category. It's the red for money. Kids are spoiled rotten. They got money instead of time. Max was staying at the top of her profession, and Brad was doing the same with everything else. Chelsea's much younger, isn't she? Mm. Fifteen. Max is threatening with boarding school. I wonder if she's the one sending those dirty letters. To her own lover? Could be. Amazing language they pick up at those snob schools. I only learnt the four little ones at her age. <laughs> I have an appointment. Mrs. Redfern. Mrs. Redfern Sr. And Sam's being a real pain in the butt about this money. He wants all sorts of guarantees. Incredible, isn't it? My own money. Yes, dear, very trying. And so Caro might put some money in. Caro? She tipped into Supervisor Kitchen when Alex went walkabout. Really? I do find family loyalty so touching. <laughs> Darling, I want to go and talk to your father. Might be a minute. No. So, fishing in international waters now, I see. Right. It's the home waters I'm finding treacherous. Why the hell did you have to involve Mother? Because the school will listen to the Dowager Duchess. Well, you certainly didn't do anything to help with the headmistress. And you didn't say a word, as usual. Brad. Ah, hi. Hi. Oh, I'm sorry to interrupt, but um, our table's ready. Unless you two would prefer. There are very few secrets we keep from you, Reed. If I can do anything to help with Chelsea, just call Thanks, me. but I don't think there's anything any of us can do. Mother's in charge. Well, very capable hands. Mm, if a little icy to the touch. What's food like, Brad? I hear they've got a new cook. These red friends will do anything for money. You know, you should have kept Maxine barefoot, pregnant, and in the kitchen. No, I agree, Catherine. There was nothing else you could have done. A very painful decision, of course. And the recommendation goes to the board tonight. I'm afraid so. I never knew that Chelsea was such a disruptive influence. Well, to be fair, she isn't normally. So it was just the one isolated incident. A very serious incident, Olivia. Oh, yes, of course, my dear. Strange how it manifests itself. The divorce. She was very brave at the time, of course, but... some years ago now. Her, her mother has a very absorbing career. I'm sorry, Olivia, but I cannot make exceptions. Catherine, as if I'd ask you to. If I'd wanted to use any slight influence I have, I'd have gone straight to the chairman of the governors. Sir Joseph has been a family friend for years. So you only came here to find out why? Well, naturally. I see her school reports, and she seems to be doing extremely well academically. Yes, she's in the top third. And her artwork is quite exceptional. But then, of course, I'm probably biased. She did design the frontispiece of the school magazine this year. I've been thinking for some time that the art facility should be extended. There are other things besides the three R's. The Red Ferns have always been very generous, but in the present circumstances... Catherine, that art room is totally inadequate. I'm offering you a donation of $50,000. To withdraw Chelsea's expulsion? She has promised me that she'll behave. I'm sorry, Mrs. Redfern, but I'm not for sale, and neither is St. Margaret's. Look, Catherine, and now I'd like you to leave my office. I've got to see you. But not now. I came in this morning. I have a client coming to see me. At home tonight, then. Come tonight. We haven't got a home anymore. You won't even have a job if you carry on in the office like this. You've been talking to her, haven't you? You're trying to get me sacked. You need help, babe. Real help. I need you. I want you to help me. You just get out of here. I don't want my clients seeing you in this state. Saying how good my column was in the last issue. But Jane, I wrote that column. 
Holland, don't you remember? Come on, get you home. No, I've got to write my card. I'll help you. Come on. Are you sure you're all right? The spirit may be willing, but the flesh grows increasingly weak. Thank you. I'm sorry, Catherine. I didn't mean to offend you. That's all right. The irony of it is that I've been meaning to mention this donation business for some time. I just find it takes longer to get round to things these days. Well, you're not on your own there. I'm rather glad I shall be retiring shortly. None of these problems when you started teaching, eh? No, indeed. One tries to uphold the old ways. They're going to send Chelsea to one of these liberal boarding schools where they call all the teachers by their Christian names and discipline's a dirty word. When I think of the 30 years you put a, a real sense of values into these girls, that's what's important about St. Margaret's. No one teaches the old values anymore. It's all computer sciences and quantum physics these days. Not our world, eh, Catherine? No, Olivia, not our world at all. Brad, I'm terribly sorry. We've been rushed off our feet in there. You shouldn't have waited. A celebration. Mm, lovely. The celebration, is it real or pretend? Real. Here's to Diamond Pharmaceuticals. You got the contract! <laughs> oh. It's the biggest promotion we've ever had. TV, radio, full-page newspaper ads. Angela, it's a new slimming pill. Does it work? <laughs> Who cares? No, seriously, though, it'll revolutionise dieting. That's wonderful. You see? You brought me luck. Angela. I've heard of that somewhere. Give me six weeks and everyone will have heard. Great news, isn't it? I just wonder why they gave it to you, one of the big agencies. I mean, your firm is hardly the big time, is it, Dad? Some people like us. Hey, that's my champagne you're drinking. Chelsea, darling, what are you doing here? If you're busy, I can see it's No, not. no, no, it's fine. I'm just surprised, that's all. I had to go see Grandma this morning. She's going to sort the school out. She's going to try, but it's not going to be easy. I think drugs are pretty dumb anyway. Well, better that you find out now instead of later, don't you think? You know, I haven't been a 100% mother, but well, we've had some good times, haven't we? Yeah. I've had a hell of a fight to get where I am now. And it changes you. It makes you hard. You don't even notice it's happening. I love you, Chelsea. I know I don't say it very often, but I do. I love you too, <laughs> Mum. Come here. <laughs> you know what? Well, I'm going to work really hard. No wagging school and no messing with drugs. And I'm going to get my school sorted. Oh, darling, that's wonderful. Yeah, I promised Grandma, because then she says she'll buy me a car for my 16th birthday. <laughs> We're certainly in need of new facilities. Parents aren't as generous with their donations as they once were. <laughs> I was very impressed with the science block. Ah, a benevolent pharmaceutical company. Oh. Plenty of money being made there. <laughs> but you see, so many of our pupils come from a farming background, and they're having a problem even finding fees. Indeed, yes. So even routine maintenance has to be deferred. There's plenty of new money about, of course, but that type of person doesn't seem to feel the need for a private education. And anyway, one has to be so careful about selection. Where are you going? I've got my diary. You're missing your break. Just off now. See you later. You've been very kind giving me so much of your time. Not at all. I've enjoyed our chat. 
And my offer regarding the art facilities. It's very generous, Olivia, but... Uh... No strings attached. Just a donation from one of St. Margaret's old girls. Perhaps you'd agree to name it after you to mark your retirement. Oh, no, no. It would have to be called the Redfern Room. Oh, well, perhaps we'd better leave the board to decide that. It wouldn't appear on the agenda this evening, of course. No, of course not. I wouldn't want it to seem I'd been influenced by your generosity. No. This evening you must decide Chelsea's future. You did say Chelsea had made a promise about her future behaviour. And that she would work hard. You have my guarantee. At least her grandmother's a good, stable influence. I see no reason why I shouldn't ask the board to be lenient with the girl. Thank you. After all, it's not the kind of publicity we need at the moment. No, certainly not. If only her mother could use her magazine to do a spread about the plight of private schools. That's the sort of thing we need. That sounds an excellent idea. I shall mention it. Oh, no, no. That's the least I can do. You've been very kind. Any luck with the shares? One of them cooked for a shearing gang, and the other smelt like a distillery. So, no chef. You don't mind coming for a bit longer, do you? How are the books going? Who's got the key to the liquor store? I have. Did you want something? What happens when you're busy and Greg needs supplies? He borrows it, why? Have you ever considered he might be taking home full bottles? Oh, come on. I know he downs the odd drink or two, but he's a damn good barman. We're already short of staff. The book suggests something's going on. The bar should be showing an awful lot more profit. How much is he taking? I don't know. Well, have you actually seen him take anything? No. Well, so what are you suggesting? I can't sack him on the strength of your intuition. Alistair, he could be robbing you blind. He's a bloody good barman. If he's got a bit of a fiddle going, so what? It could be serious. It would be, if I accused him without any proof. Sorry, Cara. Oh, I see. Jane's column. I'm just trying to put it into some sort of order. Freud couldn't put that in order. I presume Mother Superior hasn't seen this. What do you think? I wouldn't go too far with the Good Samaritan Act if I were you. She's depressed. She'll get over it. If I'd just got rid of Campbell Wright, I'd be over the moon. She loves him. Yeah. And look where it got her. Seriously, Papa. Don't get involved. Too late. Thanks, Mr. Wright. Oh, thanks. Mm. Maxie, can I have a minute? If that's all it is. What is it? It's Jane's column. Oh, God, look at this. We can't have them printing that with the article. It might be late again. Go on. Well, she's upset. I know that. I upset her. Please, can she have a little more time? What do you think? It's good. It's good enough. Maybe I was a little hard on her today. OK, give her a little bit more time. This time. Thanks. Ah! God! Yeah. Which courier service delivered this? Um, I don't know. Well, take it down to the basement and put it in the rubbish. Now, I wouldn't. Oh, poor little thing. Doesn't look at all well. Here we are, dear. It's all yours. Leave those now, darling. Time we were in bed. You're right. <laughs> oh, I'll leave the rest till morning. <laughs> now you mustn't let Alistair take advantage of you. You're too kind. Brad, you haven't signed the contract with Diamond yet? In the morning. I remembered where I'd heard the name Angela. Oh, darling. I read about them. They used to be made in the States. They had to take them off the market. Angela's a brand new product. They're suspected <clears throat> of causing birth defects. They changed the name, that's all. Oh, Cara, you know what the Yanks are like. Brad, this is serious. So? We 
talk about it in the morning. No. We'll talk about it now. Any woman who takes slimming pills when she's pregnant is asking for it. How can you say that? And what if they don't know? I'm damn sure you're not going to tell them. All right, then. Would you take a slimming pill? I'm not thinking about myself. Look, there are too many women who've been told all their lives that they have to be slim. It's healthy to be slim. So you don't care about babies born with no arms and legs? Oh, why do women have to be so emotional? We don't force them to take the damn pills! You do the next best thing! If Diamond Pharmaceuticals thought they were suspect, they'd take them off the market. Their only object is to make money. Brad, you can't work for these people. <laughs> Throw over a million dollar contract? Anyway, who the hell are you to tell me how to run my own business? I'm your wife, remember? Well, maybe that's not important anymore. They gave you nearly a whole page. Mm. Even called you glamorous. You're not bad for your age, but glamorous. Thanks. I wonder how Grandma got on at school. Mm. Expensively. Well, it won't cost you anything. And don't you believe it. Mummy will pay one way or the other. Maxine Redfern, woman at the top. And we've all got the claw marks to show how she got there. She was very fair about Electra. Damning with faint praise. Oh, what the hell are we talking about Maxine for? Cara, I'm sorry about last night, losing my temper like that. You weren't the only one. Just check the research findings, please, and don't sign until you're sure. We'll see. Mother's late this morning. Actually, it could do your firm far more harm than good. It's a million dollar contract. I meant long term. Ah, oh, Mother. How are you this morning? I'm well. Thank you, Rita. You were in bed when we got home last night. It was only 8 o'clock. <laughs> At my age, I've learned to preserve my energies for the things that count. Well, how'd you get on at the school? Well, it wasn't as simple as I'd anticipated. Thank you, Caroline. You'll be receiving a letter. Chelsea's going back. Well done. I knew you'd fix it. How did it get round the old girl? Except Miss Brizzledon. She's one out of the ark. She should have been pensioned off years ago. There's nothing wrong with a proper sense of values. You're quite right, Olivia. I couldn't agree more. It is a hell of a big contract. Do we have it exclusively? Brad wasn't giving anything away, but he certainly wants the major Angela push in our next issue. Morning, Panya. Good morning. How big a spread? Well, I've got to fix out the details this morning. Things are looking up. I'll speak to Maxine. Oh, look, tell her Brad wants some kind of advertorial. I'll give her the column size and copy as soon as I have it. OK. Mm. Morning. Uh. Morning, Mr Ratty. So who do you have to sleep with to get a decent cup of coffee around here? There's only this brown stuff. Oh, it's all right, darling. I'm not fussy. About the coffee or who you sleep with? I like the spring into summer piece. Mm, I must give Jasmine a head more often. Yes. No Connie Hart column yet, I notice. I've given her a little extra time. Delaying your decision. It's the best chance she'll ever get. Yes, well, she has been with us a long time. But I'd hate to see you hang on to her out of sympathy. Editor's decision. Publisher gracefully withdraws. Now, what are you doing on Thursday night? <sighs> Thursday nights are getting to be a bit of a habit. So? What's wrong with that? Nothing I wouldn't argue with. <laughs> I'd like to see Mrs. Redfern. I'm sorry, Mrs. Redfern is in conference. I'm sure she'll see me. I can't interrupt her while she's with Mr. Chapel. Mrs. Redfern, how lovely to see you again. Do I know you? Jane Wright. I do the Connie Hart column. Will you kindly tell Maxine that Mrs. Redfern Senior is here? No, please. Go straight in. I'm sure Maxine will be thrilled to see you. I'll just check. Times, Mrs. Reed. Damn it, girl. Senior. I don't care. Who? <sighs> Olivia, do come in. I hope I'm not interrupting. No, not at all, Olivia. <clears throat> Good morning. I do believe Mrs. Redfern's made you blush. Mrs. Redfern Senior isn't good for my blood pressure. So, Miss Brizzledon is not above a little blackmail. That's a rather tasteless word. I think it describes the situation adequately. She's learned to play your game. I suppose I didn't really expect your gratitude. 
Oh, is that part of the deal? You should have bought a ransom note. Just do it, Maxine. You know there's no alternative. Olivia, you may be able to buy off St. Margaret's with a rather large donation, but you cannot make promises on my behalf. I already have. That article must appear in your next issue. That's the next issue. We can't make last-minute changes, not with the opposition ready to snap up our market. Don't oppose me. I have made it possible for Chelsea to return to St. Margaret's, as you asked. I hear you've bought Chelsea, too. I've given the girl an incentive. I wouldn't call it an incentive. I'd call it a bribe. One single indiscretion on her part, and all my efforts will have been in vain. Maybe we could write that story in this series of articles on the advantages of private schooling. You can write what you like. Thank you. Would you like to write it? You might as well. It'll ruin us. Oh, come. I'm sure with your ability, you'll be able to turn it to your advantage. You do have the ability, do you? Magda? Gemma? My office, please. Got a spare pencil? Got a spare valium? Oh, don't close the door. I want Bridget and Jasmine to come in after you. Magda, your feature. Health retreats, will it date? You want to hold it over? If it'll last. Fine. Good. Then it's out. I've had an idea. I want to start a new series in this issue. We well, haven't got much time. I want the line-out by tomorrow. Private schools, their place in today's society. Private schools? Mm. Old values, hard times, falling roles. Falling building. I don't know whether I believe in private schooling. Journalists aren't paid to have beliefs. I didn't mean... I just thought it was a good angle. It has to be there, but don't make it too obvious. Most people couldn't afford to send their kids in a million years. Well, start from there. Dreams. Ivy-covered walls, cricket and croquet, parents and fancy hats. I'll have a photographer for you tomorrow. Oh, and start with St. Margaret's. The headmistress has offered full cooperation. Right. They're very strong on the old values there. Mr. Sorry, there's no way I can get away tonight with chock a block. Look, I'll try to come around with the flat later on, okay? Yeah, okay. Will um Gemma be home tonight? What's she got to do with it? I just wondered. Hey, relax. Let me get you another drink. Greg. Right with you. I don't think I want another drink. Anyway, Gemma's still working. At this time. She and Magda are doing a rush job. They're not very happy about it either. Something about the virtues of private schools. That Max's idea. Wants to line up Ponto. Can't see her being very sympathetic. Chelsea was suspended from St. Margaret's this week. Look, got to go. Might see you later. I still don't see why she's so keen. Take it from a pro. Just write the wordies and take the pennies. Cheers. We just finished. I thought you were going night clubbing. Well, I'm not. Are you and Alistair all right? What's it to you? I don't ask you questions about your boyfriend. You can if you like. Oh, I'm sorry. Look, I think I'll get an early night while I have the chance. Night. I'm sorry. Auntie Magda smells intrigue. She's upset. She's positively green about you and Alistair. There's nothing between me and Alistair. You don't have to say a thing, dear. But it certainly seems that Jasmine thinks Alistair has his sights set elsewhere. I've warned you to stay out of the firing range. Good night. Thank you very much. Drive safely. Chelsea, isn't it? I didn't give you a tip before. Very good service. Thanks. Not that you'd want this job forever. <laughs> no way. Too hard on the feet. Mm, stick at school, get a good education, that's the thing. It's at Margaret's, isn't it? Look, I've got a taxi coming. Mm, so have I. Actually, Chelsea, you might be able to help me with a story I'm working on at the moment. We pay pretty well. What for? Well, take this present story. Low life in top schools. Just the sort of thing that goes on, you know. Booze, sex, drugs, that sort of thing. Oh, but I don't suppose it happens at St. Margaret's. How stupid of me. More like a nunnery, eh? A nunnery? You've got to be joking. And the odd cigarette at the back of the gym. Bit of flirting with the boys from St. Martin's. I wouldn't say St. Margaret's was that boring. Really? 
Listen, why don't we share the taxi? You can tell me all about it. Okay. It's been an awfully long day. I'm really tired. <laughs> Me too. Mm. I'll see you tomorrow, please. Thanks. Okay. Good night. Is this? Oh, for God's sake, Maxine. Take a pill or something. I thought I heard the phone. Was anything wrong? No, nothing. Wrong number. Oh, it's the gills on the gingerbread, the icing on the cake. It's monuments and mirror glass, the city's on the make. Devil takes a hindmost and no one counts the cost. It's such a sweet seduction. If you swallow a lie, 